Hey guys, it's your girl, I'm back. Um, so, <coughs> oh, excuse me. If you, sorry, having tea. But um, if you follow me on Snapchat, you know that this is my favorite spot in my house. Um, let's get the awkwardness out the way. Yes, this is my bedroom. Yes, this is where I sleep every night. Yes, I make my bed up every day. I'm a neat freak. But <laughs> yes, this is my space. Don't creep in my um, DMs with anything inappropriate because you will get blocked. But um, I figured it would be dope to kind of do like a Q&A session since this is where this is like where I come after practice I sit here have my lunch watch Wendy Williams my TV's right over the camera um but this is the spot that I basically decompress and a lot of times I've gone on rants on snapchat and you guys know it's from right here a lot of you even recognize the same spot so I was like you know what I'm gonna do my uh, Q&A from here <laughs> but um anyway um there's a couple of things that I want to talk about today. Excuse me. It's a rainy day, so plus my tummy is a little it's acting weird, so I'm sipping on some tea. But um one of the main questions that I get, which is like an obvious question, especially with me being a part of Under Armour, is what shoes do I train in? So I was like, you know what? It's a good opportunity to do like a shoe feature. Um as well as kind of a q and a it's a question and answer right so right now my phone is probably going to be going off because i sent out a snapchat message to send in your questions but anyway right now i'm going back and forth between two shoes which is usually the case two to three shoes but um it's my off season training so we are strictly on the grass um let me take that back we're doing most of our running on the grass but then um, anything like speed agility work, hurdle work, we're either on the track or on the turf. Mostly turf, but I probably won't see the track until January. Okay, enough rambling. Let me get into the shoes. So, the first pair of shoes, um, I had it pulled up so that I have the names right. The first pair of shoes are the Under Armour Speed Form Sling Ride Fade. Um... These are what I'm wearing right now. Um, I'll try to post a better picture or whatnot. Um, typically, this is the shoe that I go to practice in. This is the shoe that I'll do most of my warm-up in. Sometimes I'll switch into another shoe by the time I get to my drills. If not, I'll stay in this through my drills and then change into the shoe that I'll show you later on that I actually do my workout in. But what I like about these is that there's a little bit more cushion. So there's more shock, sh shock, shock absorption. Um, and But even though the... Um, the sole is a little bit thicker. It's still a flexible shoe. Um, I like to feel barefoot. I like for my feet to feel like unrestricted and, you know, be able to, you know, move and function. So this shoe is good for, um, I would say road running, especially if you're going to be, um, you know, like running on concrete, you need something to absorb the shock. So this is definitely a good shoe for that. And, um, like I said, this is what I'll go to the the um, track in or in this case now the park I'll actually also lift in these as well um, Under Armour does have a shoe that is particularly for lifting but um, if I don't feel like changing I'll lift in something like this that has a little bit more um, cushion for you know when I'm doing my lip uh, excuse me Olympic lifts and stuff like that jumps etc so these are the sling ride fades um, Obviously, I have them in the black slash gray colorway, but they come in some funky um, colorways. And um, yeah, the price point is about $100. $99, yeah, $99.99. So then the other shoe that I'm in are called the Slingshots. Now the colors on these are a little funky. I don't see these on the website, so I don't know if these are, um, if this colorway, I mean, is not out or if it's out and already sold out it is a bright color so it may be a summer color um but i do see some of the shoes from the summer still on there so who knows but these shoes honestly um even this summer i was killing them 
um <laughs> they're very extremely lightweight they're even i don't know if i spoke i didn't speak about how light these are these are light but these are even lighter um obviously the sole is a lot thinner so this is the shoe that i will do um my workout in so um you know after we do drills and i'm done warming up if i haven't already changed by the time i started my drills i'll change into this and this is what i will run in when i'm doing my reps um i really like to wear these as well sometimes even later on in the season when we are training in spike some days we'll be in a flat this is my go-to shoe um it's lightweight it's flexible yeah <laughs> um i'm not spending much time in this um for obvious reasons because i'm only training in it um me personally I wouldn't necessarily recommend like if you're a road runner I would not necessarily recommend um, training in these every day because again there's not as much shock absorption so training daily I would recommend something like this but then when you're racing obviously something like this because you want to be light you want to be flexible you want to be able to go and this is definitely what this shoe is made for so um, yeah this is both shoes are from the speed form line which if I'm not mistaken I feel like most of the shoes most of the run shoes are basically called speed form now um, I've been with Under Armour long enough to kind of know that you know we went through several different shoes and just trying to find the shoe um, and I'm not wearing it right now but I'll say that these two and the Gemini's is another one of my favorites I'll probably talk about those um, in another video but at the moment these are the two shoes sorry an email came through i should turn the sound off on my computer but these are the two shoes that i'm in right now that i go back and forth um like these like these come in several different colorways um there are some much cooler colors this just happens to be the, the pair that i'm wearing right now but yeah so let me know if you guys are wearing any of these or you know how you feel about them what what else you want to see whatever so now let's move on to the q a excuse me let's see what we got here i had a couple of questions left over from the last time um i did this so i'm gonna try to get to those before i get to the new ones so the first one is <laughs> what are my fastest times um, so 400 is 49.84, um, 200 is 22.57, that was a PB that I ran this year, um, and my 100 PB is like 11.24, I believe, something like that. Um, I'm just gonna stick to the outdoor times, I'm not gonna bother with indoors. Um... Ooh, this is kind of broad. Do I have any advice for runners in training? Um, I guess what I would say is um, however you want to break it up, whether it's every week, every other week, every... I'm going to have to call him back. <laughs> We've been playing phone tag, but in the middle of my filming, no, I'm going to take the call. I'm back I think yeah I'm certain that the question that I left off on was do I have any advice for runners in training and what I was gonna say is I don't know every like training cycle is different but if you break your training cycle into like two to three weeks I know a lot of times you're training for like that big thing so like for me last year it was training for the Olympic trials but before the trials I had I'm saying last year like in my mind, 2017 has already started because I'm training for 2017, but you guys get what I mean. So, um, but there were meets in between that I had to kind of like break up the training leading up to the trials. And um, I find that when I'm not competing, that training cycle becomes very boring. So you have to do something to make it fun and kind of like make it kind of competitive in a sense, but then 
you know, find ways to create markers for yourself or create goals so that as you go, you have those things to, you know, kind of track where you are in your training and then celebrate, you know, the small victories or figure out what it is that you need to work on to get closer to your goal. But a lot of times when you're just training, 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 and you don't have anything to break up that monotony of training for that big thing, it can become overwhelming and it can become boring. So I say break up your training into two or three weeks, set small goals for yourself. And as you go, you know, try to check along or check off on those goals and see where you are. If you're doing good, celebrate, maybe have a small piece of cake. Or if you're not doing good, figure out what you want to do to, you know, get to your goal the next time around. I hope that was a good question. I mean, a good answer. Sorry. Um, what's your hardest workout? <sighs> My hardest workout. Um, I'm not. I think it's obvious that I like speed. Like, I don't like to do. I don't like to run long and slow. Like, I like to, the gun goes, I go. Um, so, something hard for me is like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, another workout that's hard, but I like it is uh, because it's a good marker for where I am training is broken quarters. Um, and we'll, we'll break it up in different ways. Some days we'll do two 200s, some days we'll do. 250, 150, some days we'll do 300, 100. It all depends on what phase of my race we're working on. And for the most part, what we'll do is run the first rep, rest 30 seconds, and run the last rep. And ultimately, you're trying to run as close as possible or above your race pace, so even faster than what you know you run at a race. Um, and you just kind of, you know, run through your zones, run through your target times. Um, Depending on what time of year it is, sometimes we'll do one that's like blazing fast. Sometimes we'll do three. Those days that I have three, pretty certain I vomited after. But, um, so yeah, that I would say is my hardest workout. All right, what's next? Oh, okay. What's an average pre pre blah, 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 blah. What's an average preseason workout for you like? This person has two questions, but I'll get back to um, the second part. An average preseason workout for me, which is the phase that I'm in right now, is like repeat 400s, repeat 500s, repeat 300s. It's a lot of over distance, short rest. Um, I won't have more than three rests, three, three rests, three minutes rest um, per set. So like... If I have six 500s, we'll do three sets of 500 with three minutes rest. And then we'll take like five minutes in between sets and then do the last three with three minutes rest. Um, yeah, this part of training sucks. Like <laughs> This part of the season is the part where I pull up to practice. And especially like the first two weeks, I pull up to practice and I sit in my car and I say, Lord, is this really what I want to do? Because it, I mean, it hurts, y'all. It hurts. It really does hurt. Um, so yeah, that's that's a preseason workout for me. It's a lot of over distance, um, short rest, short recovery, and you're just out there just putting it in. We say we're making deposits in the bank so that in June and August we got all the equity to make withdrawals. So the second part of her question is what colleges recruited you slash what made USC the best out of all of them? It's funny because I just went to my um, homecoming this weekend and this was actually something that I'd spoke about. Um, first of all, I was recruited by a lot of schools, <laughs> um, but I, I took my official visits to USC, of course, UCLA, University of Texas, and the University of Maryland. Um, my college coach, Coach Fry, hates to hear this. I knew probably by my freshman year of high school that South Carolina was a school that I wanted to go to, but I played hard to get. I made Coach Fry feel like he had to work for me, but I already kind of knew <laughs> that that was where I was going. Um, but what what made me choose USC out of all of them? First of all, at the time that I was being recruited, um, if you two things, if you wanted to be a great quarter miler and a great hurdler, South Carolina was a school that you went to. 
Coach Fry's program for quarter milers and hurdlers was just phenomenal. Like you just knew that was where you wanted to go. And he, um, at the time he also had a ton of professional athletes. And that was something that kind of made sense to me because when I went into college, no, I didn't, I had the dream of course of being professional one day, but I didn't know for certain that it would work out for me. But I saw that, you know, if that is something that, you know, would work out for me, that his athletes, number one, had the longevity, and number two, he could coach on that level as well. Um, now, granted, obviously, I'm no longer with Coach Fry, but Coach Fry and I still have a great relationship. We've had our growing pains, but, you know, excuse me, mm, excuse me, we're all adults, people move on in life, it happens. But um, I knew it was a program that would set me up for the professional life. And it would set me up in terms of not being burned out by the time that I got to the professional life, as well as preparing me for the professional life. Um, and then, of course, the school academics was important in my household. My mom pretty much gave me free range when I told her the schools that I was looking at. She basically looked at each school and said, OK, I approve of these. Um, I studied exercise science when I was in South at South Carolina and South Carolina had one of the best exercise science programs in the nation. So, and then on top of that, I also entered the Honors College. So, I got the best of both worlds at South Carolina. Um, I always tell people it was the best three and a half years of my life. <laughs> I would go back and do it all over again and not change a thing. Because I got my work done, but I had a great time in college as well. So, let me open up Snapchat and see what else has come through. I heard a couple of bings while I was sitting here. Come on, come on, come on. Oh! I was actually asked about my vision board um, that was seen in a couple of my previous videos. Um, I guess the story behind my vision board... Um, some of the things that are on my vision board. Sorry if it looks like I'm not looking at you because my vision board is right behind the camera. But um, I actually host a vision board party um, every year. I try to do it, if not on New Year's, like immediately after New Year's. And I invite a couple of girlfriends over. We throw all of our magazines on the middle of the table. And we sit, out, sit up and cut up pictures, sayings, whatever it is that... We want to use this motivation going into the year. Um, so it's it's and it's kind of a good way because we all kind of sit around and you know number one it's a great way for me and my girlfriends to get to fellowship because obviously with my schedule traveling and all this other stuff you know it's hard for me to have that girl time so it's a good time number one for me to get girl time in but it's also a good time for us to kind of check in on one another. Um, we learn about each other's goals and kind of it creates a sense of um, accountability between one another because we kind of know the things that, you know, each other wants or desires. And then, you know, we can kind of check in on one another like, hey, you know, I remember such and such. And so having vision board parties are good in that sense um, that, you know, you can kind of hold each other accountable and then it opens up the door for a conversation for maybe things that you haven't thought of or you know but um my vision board is one that's personal um or I shouldn't say it's personal because it's out in the open anyone can come here and see it it was in my video but um it's just words and things to remind myself of the things that I want and um, one of the things that I work really hard on and it's something that I feel like has made the difference in my life and even in my performance on the track is self-love. And um, so that's mainly one of the things that you see on my board or what a lot of the words are is to love myself, to do everything that I do from a place of love. And, um, you know, I just find that, you know, when, when I found my self-worth, if you will, <laughs> um, and just love me for me and the person that I'm growing to be and, you know, even the person that I desire to be, you know, things just work out that much better. And 
I enjoy the things that I do that much more as well. You know, I think we, um, I can get a little preachy here, but you know, God tells us to ask him for our desires. And, but when you ask him for those desires, you also have to believe that you're worthy of those same desires that you ask him for. And, um, that, that's kind of been a thing that I've, um, been working on over the years. And it's everything from, you know, wanting to be the best on the track and one of the best in the world down to my personal of, you know, hoping to one day be married and have a family. Um, you have to believe that, you know, you're worthy and, you know, of those things. God put us here. We all have our, our individual callings and what he put us here for. But, you know, you got to believe that you're worthy of those things and that, you know, if you ask God, you shall receive. So that's a little bit of the story behind my vision board. I don't know if you guys want me to go any deeper than that. I'll probably have to work my way up to So I don't know why my camera stops recording after 12 minutes, but whatever. South Africa was one of the places that we actually talked about visiting next year. Um, I know a couple of people from South Africa, and then I've also just heard amazing things about South Africa. And believe it or not, I've been to South America, of course North America, Europe, Asia, Australia. Is there anywhere to visit on Antarctica? I don't know, but <laughs> um, I haven't been to Africa, so it would be nice to visit Africa and, of course, visit South Africa. So, yes, I would consider coming to South Africa. And that is all. I think I've answered enough questions um, for this Q&A segment. I don't, I don't like for the videos to get too long because, you know, I want you guys to actually sit down and watch them. But, um... This is my spot, as I mentioned, and if you have any more questions that you want me to address or you want me to go any deeper on anything that I said here, leave them in the comments below. Of course, as usual, comment, what did the YouTubers say? Comment, rate, and subscribe. <laughs> um, yeah, this is kind of a way that I can get more personal with you guys and, you know, talk a little bit about the behind the scenes of my life and um, what I do on the track. I'm not going to get too personal with y'all, but you know, I'll let you know a little something, something. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time. Bye.